What's up? Hello? 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 Hope y'all are okay. Doing well. Let me get myself situated here. Get everything moved around. Get my green cup out of the way somewhere. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing good. It's Monday, August 6th. August 6th. Can you believe it's August? I cannot. And I'm not gonna lie. I am super, super, super sleepy and tired. But I'm here. So um, here we go. Sad because, you know, last Monday my mom was here, so it was a super fun Facebook Live. This week, it's just me. I'll just get me tonight, but that's okay. So, let's do this thing. If I can figure out what's going on. Yeah. Yes, Bethany. My tried and true one, one friend is always here to support me. All right, so I hope you guys had a great last week. Um, my mom was here all last week, and we gave her the tour of Billings, which wasn't a ton, but she got to see, you know, where we've been living the past three years. Um, last Wednesday and Thursday, we did Yellowstone. We did as much of Yellowstone as we could. Um, we think, well, no, we don't even think. We hit most of like the big spots, you know, Old Faithful, Grand Prismatic Springs, all the Sulphur Springs, a lot of the, you know, the stuff that if you go to Yellowstone, you're going to make sure you see. Um, but there's just, there's no way that you can get all of that in. But we, we kept it moving. And I want to say on um, the Thursday, we did um, just over like 17,000 steps. My mom has had her little Fitbit going and I was tracking our steps and everything. So, um, 17,000. It was either almost 17,000 or just over 17,000. Mm -hmm. Either way, it was a crap ton of steps. And um, Friday, Philip went to work and me and mom just like lounged around all day and everything. So, but yeah, I'm sad. She um, is gone. She left early yesterday morning and then yesterday, we like vegged most of the day. I sat on the couch doing as much as I could, you know, on the couch. We watched, you know, caught up on a few TV shows or anything. But my favorite thing, though, about going to Yellowstone was, in part of my language, was watching all the dumbasses. There are signs everywhere telling you stay off of this area because it's thermal area or it's super soft and soft ground meaning you could you know fall through or um you know sulfuric acid you know flowing and um, all that kind of stuff you'd be surprised how many people are like oh the sign's right there so if i walk on this side i'm safe what no they got the sign there to tell you to stay on the boardwalk and a lot of the signs did say stay on the boardwalk. A lot of the signs said stay off area because of hot thermal area. For some reason, they thought that it was only on that side. So it just, it just did not make sense to me. They were and I'm adventurous, but when it comes between life and death like that, nope. We, upon going into Yellowstone, huge herd of bison, people walking, you know, amongst the bison. I mean, you've got all the, you got the maps, you've got all the brochures, you've got all the signs and everything saying that if you encounter wildlife to stay away, at least 100 feet away. They didn't care. Now, the bison did look like, you know, they were fairly gentle and that they wouldn't do anything to you. But if you saw the viral video that was going around of the guy that was there the day before us, guess what? If you anger a bison, they will charge. Anyway, people walking amongst the bison. And then, um... It, it really did. It just blew my mind how stupid people were. We went to the Grand Prismatic um, Spring on this side of the river. You've got the sulfuric acid and all this hot thermal volcanic 
molten lava stuff and everything flowing into the river. On this side of the river, people are like on the edge, like dipping their fingers in, dipping their toes in. You got a park ranger over here going, y'all, it's not actually for swimming. <sighs> That's all I could do. And the thing is, the few pictures that I post on my personal page, um, I think on Friday, was only the last couple of pictures from the last couple of hours. Had I thought about it, I would have taken pictures all day Wednesday and most of the day Thursday. Yeah, people are stupid. But anyway, I wasn't. I was smart. So, <laughs> moving right along. Um, tonight, Cloud Nine Martinis. Um, I do not have high hopes. I, I, have, I do doubt that this one will taste very good. Um, but we're going to try it. And actually, I forgot to grab an ingredient out. So, pardon me for a second. And grab this out. Um, so, I did debate, you know, canceling tonight. And just doing a, hey, I'm going to sit here on Facebook Live about our trip to, you know, Yellowstone. But me sitting here talking for 30 minutes about something y'all probably don't care a ton about. With no pictures and everything that I can show you right now. Um, probably won't be very interesting. So anyways, cloud nine martinis tonight. And then um, because school has already started, my niece started last Monday. I know a bunch of children that started today. Um, some start later on through the week and a bunch start next week. School started. We're talking about fine motor skills and I'll explain more about that in just a second. But the martini first up. And I had trouble organizing my materials because it's so simple that it should, yeah, just had a bunch of stuff. Cloud Nine Martini. You need whiskey, and I actually went and bought some at the store the other night because whiskey isn't something that I usually care about. So that's my first inclination that this will not be a good martini. You need um, whiskey, amaretto, pineapple juice, Sprite, and grenadine. And of course, a shaker with ice. <sighs> yep. Shake it with ice. And. How is this going to work out? One part whiskey. So tell me what you guys did this weekend, if you are watching. One part amaretto, one part whiskey, one part pineapple juice, and then a splash of Sprite and a splash of grating. So if you're watching, tell me what you did this weekend. Um, I know it was weird because last week, um, it was actually warmer here than it was in the south. And from what I understand, actually it was just shared right before I started this. Um, you know, if you saw my personal page, the, um, the pictures I posted earlier in the week um, were of the Beartooth Pass. That was us as we left Billings. And... The pass that you take going onto that side uh, into Wyoming. Beautiful. I mean, it was a tiny bit. It wasn't, no, it wasn't cool. It just felt good. I mean, it felt good. I mean, yeah, it felt good. Anyway, if <laughs> I was just made aware when, um, right before this, it snowed on the Bear Tooth Pass yesterday. Yesterday. Can you believe that? August 5th, it snowed on the Bear Tooth Pass. Now yesterday here in Billings, it um, did get a bit chilling. It was, it felt nice most of the day, and then the um, wind came through, clouds came through, and we went to take the dog on the walk yesterday, and um, I turned around and came back because it had gotten chilly. Never would I have thought that it would have snowed an hour and a half from us. And why is that popping off? I don't know what is going on there. Yeah, never would I have thought that it would have snowed an hour and a half from us. But guess what? Not even an hour and a half, an hour from us. So it's just crazy. So I don't have, like I said, I doubt this one will taste good, but we'll try it out. Bear, um, the Cloud Nine Martini. Let's try 
Lay this out, seam. It's not horrible. It actually, maybe I put too much grandy in it, but it's not horrible. It's actually got a bit of a um, cherry flavor to it. I'm not upset. Much better than I definitely thought it'd be. All right, since people have already gone back to school and or school is starting soon, tonight we're talking about fine motor skills. And me being a pre-K teacher for as long as I was, like 13 years, um, you never realize how important they are. The muscles in your hands and everything they allow you to do. Children have to build those muscles in order to um, do the smallest tasks. Being able to feed themselves, brush their teeth, being able to zip up a zipper, button a shirt, um, I mean dress themselves, you know. Um, being able to lace anything, stack anything. Your fine motor skills are what allow you to cut and write and paint. Anything that makes you or allows you to um, complete a task that involves detail or, you know, focus and concentration. Something small movement. Children have to build up those muscles. That way so they can learn how to tie their shoes. That way so they can learn how to write properly. That way so they can learn how to do, you know, unzip their, you know, backpacks. These are things that, you know, the minute that they're born, you start doing things to strengthen those hands. So the majority of this is going to be talking about children that are um, three, four, five years old. Uh, of course, you can change the activities for older children, you can change the activities for younger children. So, of course, if you've got a seven, eight, nine, ten year old, guess what? Hopefully by now, their fine motor skills are on point. Now, you may hear about large motor skills. Those are what requires, of course, large movements. That's running, that's playing, that's kicking. You know, basically running around, throwing, those large movements. We're talking about fine motor skills so tonight. Okay, so, let me look at my note here. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, a lot of these activities, now, while they are good for strengthening these muscles, if you work with children or have children and let's say they get frustrated with themselves or um, they get overly excited or they just need a few minutes to themselves, all of these are activities that you can easily give them that will help calm them down, give them a few minutes to relax. So, um, a lot of these are, you know, good to keep in mind for those moments that they just need to decompress for a second. So, um, while we are talking about fine motor skills, that's something to keep in mind. So, again, um, fine motor skills is writing, coloring, tying shoes, being able to hold, squeeze, pinch something, eating, brushing teeth, um, cutting, gluing, working puzzles, buttons, zippers, all this. All right, so... First, this is one of the simplest things you can do to increase and strengthen those muscles. Grab yourself a piece of paper, various lines on a piece of paper. You don't have to be an artist, not one bit. You don't have to be an artist at all. Draw just lines, you can draw letters, shapes, whatever. Give your children a marker, any marker. You can even paint if you want, color pencils, whatever. Just some kind of writing, utensil and then all they have to do see if they can trace it so one of the things that I know that they say a lot of times for young children like one and a half two year olds that their um, art is scribble art to me it's not scribble art it's the beginning of those fine motor skills if you ever notice a um, if you give a young child, one and a half, two years old, two and a half, two and a half is a bit older, a lot of times when you give them a writing utensil, most of the time they do this. They don't do a whole lot of straight lines. They do this like this because it's actually a whole lot easier to do this. It's a whole lot harder for them to draw a straight line. So that's the reason why they teach cursive a lot of times first, because they've already got that concept down. So that's why it's important to do this. Do various lines. Some of them will be harder, some will be easier. But right there, super simple, great way to work on increasing those skills. 
Now, doo -doo -doo, let's see. I have so many things that I want to say about each one that it's actually hard for me to keep these straight. Now, another thing to um, for them to do, draw your lines on some paper. Give them a pair of scissors. You can find scissors that are very, very dull and will only cut, um, they're usually really very, very flimsy kind of plastic, but they'll only cut paper. It's really hard to cut hair. So um, look for those or sit there and supervise. Never leave a child alone with scissors. You never know when they feel like they need a haircut. But draw your lines on a piece of paper. Give them a child size pair of scissors. Do not give them an adult size. Now also, um, Watch what hand they put it in. If they put it in this hand, let them do it. If they put them in this hand, let them do it. If they try and flip it around that way, show them the way to use scissors. They may end up swapping hands. I've heard, I've talked to many, many occupational therapists that um, you cannot tell if a child is right-handed or left-handed until they are about five years old. That's not determined until they're about five years old. They can flip between the two equally. So keep that in mind. Don't force anything on them, please. So anyways, draw your lines on there. And then with their child scissors, see if they can cut on the lines. Cutting with paper is something that's super, they love it. They never get scissors. So that's something that's just super exciting to them. But anyway, draw some lines on there and let them um, just cut with scissors. They'll love it. It doesn't matter. If you want to, they can even sit there and just tear paper. Tearing paper is fine motor skills. So there's that. Folding paper is fine motor skills. Um, to make it a little bit harder, you could cut shapes. If you needed to, you can draw your shapes on there. Draw arrows on there for which way you want them to cut. That way so they can cut out a whole shape. Because, I mean, it is all about successes. So if they were to sit here and um, want to cut out a triangle and they followed your, you know, guidelines, guess what? If they end up with a triangle, you can congratulate them and they're super thrilled. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a triangle, but guess what? It's a success for a three or four or five year old. All right, next thing, um, I think, I'm trying to remember there are only, I mean, there are only so many notes that I can make myself. Yeah. All right. Next one is, you can go online, go into Google, and type um, fine motor skills painting, um, dot painting, dot drawing, and you can come, if you hit the images tab, you can come across tons and tons and tons and tons of these coloring sheets. This is a train, and if you see it, there's little dots in the whole thing. Don't want to be unicorn here. Grab yourself some paint. Grab your child some paint, I guess. And you can use Q-tips. You can get these little tiny daughters if you want. Little daughters like that. Daughters, daughters brushes, little dot brushes or whatever, or you can use Q-tips. And then it's, ex it, it does, it causes, it makes them, you know, really need to focus. Anyway, they can dip it into whatever color paint they want and see if they can put it inside of each little dot. That is a fine motor skill. It requires focus and concentration. Super simple. And they just fill in the dots, just like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could, um, I mean, just just print off a coloring sheet. Go to Google, coloring sheets, hit the images tab, and you will find, like this one right here, was just a rainbow. And I took a black marker and drew my own dots in it. So you do it that way too. Same thing. Then they could take their daughters or Q-tips or whatever and fill in the dots. If you want to also, you know, work on matching colors, teaching colors, you could do it by, um, you know, use red, and they need to use red paint, and so forth. That way, so they're matching colors, and um, same thing. 
Uh, okay. If you want to, shapes, letters, whatever. Take your a regular piece of paper, make your own dots. Again, don't think that this is a difficult task. Definitely think out the box. It's the most simplest things. Again, adults take it for granted how much they use their hands for small detailed tasks. But these are tasks that a lot of times are very difficult for children. There you go. So, let me put all that there. All right, couple of things. Oh, here we go, next one. I'm trying to remember. You can go to Dollar Tree. Let me move this stuff out of the way. You can go to the Dollar Tree and you can get a pack of tongs for a dollar. Two pack of tongs. These are awesome for using those pinching skills, focus, concentration. You can grab a pack of cups and grab yourself some pom-poms. Of course, if you've got older children, you will probably want smaller pom-poms. If you've got younger children, guess what? They're gonna need bigger pom-poms. So again, adjust it according to the age. But you can take a cup, any cup you want, and if you just drop your pom-poms on the ground, your younger child could use the, pom uh, the tongs, pick them up and put them in the cup. If you have, if you slightly older children, take your cups and you can put numbers on the side, therefore they need to pick up four and put it in that cup. You could do it by color, put two green ones in there. You could do adding two pink plus two, or two pink plus four equals how many pom-poms? So if they sit there and lift them and put them in there, guess what? It's adding skills, that's color skills. It's a whole lot of fine motor skills that are extremely beneficial. For the older children, use a regular pair of tweezers. It's a lot harder for them to pinch and pick up with those. So again, Dollar Tree can be your best friend. So let me move all this out of the way. All right, oh, let me look at my lines here, over here. Yeah, all right, my next, idea. I drew just some simple shapes on here. Find you a pack of stickers. Children love stickers. They love, 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 love stickers. Find a pack of stickers that has a variety of colors, like just plain colors, not, you know, assorted like rainbows or anything. Just, you know, like this one has all purple, this one has all yellow, all pink, all blue. So what you can do is, hi June! Hey, thanks for joining me this evening. So what you can do is, again, for those fine motor skills, you, you then have to be squares, draw whatever you want. You can draw circles, whatever. Again, this is color matching. This is something you probably do for like a two-year-old. Um, all they have to do, take off a sticker. This right here takes a lot of focus and a lot of concentration for young children. Being able to peel off a sticker, and don't be surprised if they get frustrated. It can be very frustrating. Peel off a sticker and match it to the color. Or just give them a piece of paper and a whole bunch of stickers and just let them go to town on a piece of paper. Perfect. Next, next, next is, let me look, stencils. Any kind of stencils you want. They could do stencils where they have to, you know, take a marker and trace the insides. You could do the letter cutouts and they have to trace around the outside. Stencils, perfect for fine motor skills. This one is probably more of an outdoor activity. A spray bottle. Fill it up with water and a little bit of paint. And, or I think there is, um, I think you, there is a recipe that you can take sidewalk chalk and like grate it up and mix it with a little bit of water and it makes like a chalk paint and spray it on the um, driveway. But if you want to get a great big piece of paper and tack it, tape it, whatever to a wall, put your paint and water in it and let the kids just sit there and spray. Or just fill it with water and let them go to town. 
This spraying action strengthens those muscles. If you want, um, on a piece of paper, draw you a bullseye and put, you know, some points in the middle, make it a game. Anytime you can make it a game, kids love it. Again, these are all things that you can do that are super simple. They cost you nothing, and you already have the materials on hand. Um, let me see. Also, with the tweezers, if you do have older children, you can grab some beads and the tweezers, and same thing with the pom-poms. So, the pom-poms are bigger, the beads are smaller. So, the tweezers be a little bit more difficult. Grab you some pipe cleaners, then being able to twist and manipulate the um, pipe cleaners requires small muscles. Or take your beads, you can do buttons, whatever circular options you want, and being able to string and lace the beads onto pipe cleaners. If they can string a whole bunch on there, guess what? They can twist it. They got themselves a fancy, fancy little, you know, bracelet. Fancy, I know. <laughs> Y'all know who I am, I'm fancy. Anyway, um, those are just a few of the examples that I have, just like of the stuff that I had like on hand. In fact, I only intended to do a few of them with you right here on camera, but I ended up at the last minute just grabbing a bunch of other stuff and everything. Super, super simple. Other things that you can do to help your children's um, strengthen those muscles in their hands. Play-Doh, Play-Doh. Play-Doh is like one of the best things you can do. Um, don't just give them Play-Doh though. Give them some popsicle sticks, plastic knives, plastic spoons, plastic forks, anything that allows them to, you know, really work into it. Um, being able to stack blocks, work with Legos, um, lacing, sewing, I said pipe cleaners. Surprisingly, nuts and bolts. Give them tons of nuts and bolts. Allow them to sit there and, you know, twist them together, piece them together. Requires those fine motor skills. Um, be, give them a jar. That opening and closing of a jar strengthens those muscles. Um, Legos, I said, folding or tearing paper. Um, give them a hole puncher. A hole puncher. And just let, their, let them sit there and, you know, punch holes in paper. You'd be surprised also how much they enjoy it. You're giving it to them because you want to help, you know, strengthen those, you know, muscles in their hands. They see it as just, you know, a game or a fun activity. They don't have to ever know that, that there's a purpose behind it. So um, those are just a few ideas. And as I think of things over the next um, few days, I may share a couple of, you know, whatever I find with you. But um, if you have any questions, please, you know, let me know. Because this is something, I mean, this is like my area. This is what I did for 13 years. And um, you'd be surprised how many kids at five years old are not able to correctly hold a pencil or are not able to cut or um, the simplest of things, but that will develop very quickly if you give them the opportunities to learn. So um, if you have any questions, whatever, feel free to send them my way. Um, this is, I could talk for days about this, but anyways, I won't because, yep, it's almost six o'clock and it's 5.59, so it's time to wrap this thing up. Until next week next week we are doing since you know it's all back to school season or anything and I'm sure it's the hustle and bustle of getting back into that morning routine we're gonna talk about some make ahead breakfast that you can make um, that you can make the night before and get up the next morning and grab out of the fridge and go or have ready for you know the kids to grab out themselves to sit at the table and eat so next week we're gonna talk about some quick make ahead breakfast that are actually healthy and um, the martini we're going to make is the peaches and cream. So I haven't said it in a few weeks, so I feel like I have to do it now. If you have not yet liked the Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram page, please go and do that. I'd love you forever. Um, I'd love if you shared it with your friends. Write me some notes. Let me know you're watching. You're seeing what I'm doing. Send me your ideas of what you want to see in the future and um, help me out. 
But I want to do what you guys want to see. So, um, let me know. So until then, I will say goodbye until next week. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening, great week, and I will see y'all on Monday. Bye.